Hey guys, we've all been waiting for this. AMD is now the best in absolutely everything, right? Well, yes and maybe not exactly, but this is still a very exciting launch and there's a lot to digest. We'll start our coverage with Ryzen 9 7950X, a 16 core chip that in my mind is the absolute productivity beast, but also has some improvements to do elsewhere. Let's get right into it. So 7950X is the highest end consumer CPU that AMD is currently launching. It features 16 cores and 32 threads with 4.5 GHz base clock and 5.7 GHz boost clock. This is a considerable jump from the last gen 3.4 GHz base clock and 4.9 GHz boost clock. AMD also mentions approximately 13% IPC uplift through improvements in branch prediction, load and store, front end as well as others. Rather than digging deep into these, Let's focus on benchmarks. In order to do it properly, we have few setups, the high-end chips from the last gen, both from Intel and AMD, as well as the two new chips, the 8-core 7700X and the 16-core 7950X. First test is Blender, where we'll load up all the cores to the max and take the CPU for a long, hard spin. In this test, 7950X is almost 30% faster than the last gen 5950X and almost 31% faster than the Intel 12900K. When checking out frequencies, we find that Ryzen 9 7950X ran just above 5 GHz and then slowly dropped down to 4740 MHz by the end of the test. Looking at the CPU temperature, we see it jumping straight to 95C and staying there. This is at TJ Maxx temperature for Ryzen 7000 series, and according to AMD, it is very much an expected behavior. I'm quoting AMD here. With the new AM5 socket and higher TDP, most processors will run into thermal wall before they hit power wall. To add to this, they've also noted that TJ Maxx is the max safe operating temperature rather than the absolute max temperature. This processor is designed to run at TJ Maxx 24 seven without risk of damage or deterioration. At 95 degrees, it is not running hot, rather it will intentionally go to this temperature as much as possible under load because the power management system knows that this is the ideal way to squeeze out the most performance out of this chip without damaging it. A very interesting way of saying that it will run hot and you need plenty of cooling. But based on our results, cooling is needed for the chip to go above base clock and with exceptionally good cooling such as 360ml liquid AO or equivalent, you'll be able to extract much more performance. When we compare temperature to the rest of the setups, we can see that Intel is up top hugging the 100 degree line and both Ryzen chips are at 95 degrees, while the last generation 5950X is hovering just above 70. If we look at the amount of power drawn, this is where it gets really interesting. The new 7950X is sucking back over 220 watts at the start and then reducing down to about 180 towards the end of the render, while the Intel chip stays at around 230 for the whole duration and, as you remember, completes the render 31% slower. So the new chip is not only running at approximately 22% less power, that is after the initial ram down, it also completed the work 31% faster. However, when compared to 5950X, it is running with approximately 23% more power, but still completes the work approximately 30% faster. So there's slight improvement here too. With the power and thermals out of the way, let's now look at the few benchmarks to get the raw performance. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. In Blender benchmark covering the three different renders, Monster, Junk Shop and Classroom, we we'll still have a massive lead in samples per minute rendered when compared to the other chips. In V-Ray benchmark, the new 7950X is just shy of 27% faster than its predecessor and 33.5% faster than its Inter counterpart. For the 7-Zip benchmark, we broke it out into single thread and multi-thread tests to check out performance on both. In single core, 7950X takes the lead by a few hundred points from 7700X as it clocks just above 5.74 GHz, while 7700X maxed out at 5.56 GHz. And in the multi-threaded test, there is also another huge jump in performance from the last gen 5950X and almost double the performance on the decompression test to the rest of the chips. In compression, the difference to the Intel CPU is 26%. I think it's time to check out some games. Let's start with the good old Shadow of a Tomb Raider. Here 7950X with its 16 cores is able to load up the GPU with a whole lot of frames, which makes it lead from 12900K by 20% on average FPS and 6% on the one percentiles. Important thing to note, the performance per watt is actually even between the two. Next is Fortnite, and here Ryzen 7 gets out in the lead, followed by 12900K and only then Ryzen 9. 
The average frame difference is around 6% between each of the devices. Ryzen 9 is likely much lower due to having multiple chiplets as compared to Ryzen 7 with single chiplet design. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see Intel taking the lead, and that is especially visible on the 1% percentile performance, which is about 7% faster than 7700X. In this example, there's actually very little improvement between 5950X and 7950X, besides 6% on the 1% percentiles. And for the last game, we have Overwatch, where the results are very neck to neck. But there is a good reason for this. Overwatch has 400 FPS in-game cap, which makes it very difficult to do reasonable CPU benchmarking at the high end. This is a two-fold issue. The fast CPUs we're testing here are pushing crazy frame rates, way past 400 FPS. To reduce the frame rate, we need to increase the resolution. This makes GPU the bottleneck, and we're stuck with this kind of worthless result. If someone knows how to remove the 400 FPS limit, please leave the info in the comments below. One new addition in the Ryzen 7000 series is the integrated Radeon GPU. So we tested those out. These are great for troubleshooting, especially if you're overclocking. By the way, let us know if you'd like us to do an overclocking guide. Also, you could technically do some light gaming. Check out this performance in Fortnite. Even though this is a 1080p low, it delivers over 100 average FPS and 71 FPS on 1% tasks. So if you're in a pinch or waiting for a new graphics card, then this may have some value to you. Performance in Overwatch is not as good though. Intel here barely hits 60 average FPS, and AMD doesn't even hit that. And with its pretty bad 1% of performance on 7950X, I don't think it's worth it. This brings us really well to the conclusion. The Ryzen 9 7950X is clearly a very powerful CPU, and comes with generational improvements in performance as well as some new features. At 699 USD, it is a premium chip but costs on end here. The AM5 motherboards aren't exactly cheap, and the RAM that we used in this build is 280 USD for the kit. All of this together makes it a very expensive build but at the same time for the production environment that is justifiable. If on the other hand you're looking to build a gaming PC, I would actually look closer at Ryzen 7 7700X and put the extra 300 USD towards other components. Essentially, for productivity at this price point, there's currently no competition, and I'm doubtful that Intel will have anything to answer with, but we'll have to wait and see. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.